guys, welcome back to Let's Talk. Um, today we've got Mark Ash with us. Uh, we're going to talk about basically the stages, the modifications required to take your car from stock to stage three. Well, Tabby's going to talk to you about that. I mean, obviously, just want to say we are social distancing. Um, we are on lockdown, so uh, I've been here probably, well, nearly for a week now, haven't uh, been home. That's the normal, I suppose, for myself. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about the two cars that we've got here. Um, both of these cars are a Mark 7 door pass. One's a two door, one's a four door. Um, and this one, this one is a stage one gold bar, and this one obviously being a stage three. So, Tabby is going to talk a little bit about the differences from stage one and stage three. So, okay. couple, Tabby. A couple of differences to point out between the two cars. This one's 2017, this one is 2019, so this one actually has the GPF fitted. So, slightly different hardware, this one doesn't come with port injectors. Where the previous models did. That's um, a new model, Tabby. I didn't? That's the latest model. Oh, crap, someone switched them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> this, this is the GPF model. That is the GPF That model. is the non GPF. This is the non GPF. Uh, so, yeah, basically, you know, initially you could just start your car straight in with a stage one tune, which is just an ECU calibration. There is no other hardware required at that point. Uh, however, you know, an intake system, like a full intake system, including the elbow, you know, always makes for, you know, that little bit of extra power. Uh, if you're looking to take the car then from, you know, stage one to stage two, you would be looking at an intake system, full intake system, including the elbow. Um, you'd be looking at an intercooler. You'd also be looking at a downpipe. Uh, they're the most essential mods for the stage two. However, you know, people go for the cat back as well. Um, catch cans, bits and bobs like that, which are, you know, not necessarily as important to the power at a stage two st stage. Um, stage three, there's different requirements depending on, on the tuners. Um, you know, you're looking at changing from stage two, you'd be looking at changing, you know, your actual high pressure fuel pump itself. Um, possibly the map sensors, sometimes even the port injectors and um, also, you know, cat back systems also helps have, you know, a high flow cat back system at that point. Um, and also the map sensors, some of the tuners change those um, and then obviously changes to the EC calibration to suit. And one of the most, um, even when we're tuning the vehicle, one of the most important things that everybody seems to forget is you have to consider about upgrading the brakes and the suspension, especially if you're doing track work. Um, suspension, not so necessary if you're out on the road. Um, it's always obviously a great modification on that track, or if you're uh, like some of our customers, a bit more of a late night street racer. Uh, but certainly the brakes. Both of these vehicles come with the upgraded brakes. This one, uh, I believe, no, that's that one that's got the uh, ceramics. It's got some uh, ceramic brakes on there. I think these were the early development ones. Um, they're now just released into production. And, and this one has the racing line fast road set up. Um, so this is the latest offerings. I like that word, Tabby. Latest offerings from racing line. Um, and this is a, a superb road uh, setup. And of course, you know, if you are mapping a vehicle uh, and you are using various tuners vehicles, so this is obviously racing line vehicles that are set up, but the obligatory decals on the side of the car is always a must. Gives you the extra horsepower when you need it. At least 15 horsepower <laughs> in the decal. Uh, yeah, I mean, as you touched on suspension, suspension, you know, necessary when you're doing any track work, you know, you, you fancy driving, you want a little bit more sturdiness from the car, you know, you want it to handle better, you want it to pull corners better, you know, suspension, roll bars, all things you need to look at in those fronts. Uh, I mean, one of the, probably the best mods you can do, especially on the front wheel drive versions of the MQB platform, 
is a doggone mount insert. It's probably one of the things that gets probably least talked about. And um, it's probably, you know, a great mod to help with the wheel hop engine movement and applying the power to the road. Okay, so you might notice underneath the engine bay here, um, this is the uh, famous R600. Um, suitable, obviously, stage one, stage two, and stage three power. Um, you can see we've got the uh, grey uh, hose added onto this as an extra, which is on this other, other car here that we've got the black hose. And these cars also have, uh, both these cars have an oil catch can system fitted. Um, and of course, you know, for that extra power, is that right, Tabby? Um, 15 horsepower. Yeah, we have the uh, dress up parts on the engine here. So they're a must. One of the things I completely forgot to mention. <laughs> I'm not even dancing to that. One of the most important things to stage three that I completely forgot to mention was the actual turbocharger itself. Uh, you know, different brands out there, uh, different manufacturers out there. This particular one is uh, one of Racing Line's own stage three kits at the moment. Um, it's just been here for some development work, and it's pretty quick. You know, stage three looking. You know, in, in I think this is about 480. 480 yeah. horsepower. Yeah, so it's about 400. And this, this turbo kit can actually do more than 480, but this is. This is where Racing Line believe that their kit sits well in the marketplace um, with no issues. I think they've yeah, done 200 odd, two, 300 kits it's not, out of the marketplace. It's not pushed to the max. Uh, it's running the stock map sensors, so the boost pressure you know, below two bar. Um, you know, it's a very quick car. Zero to 60s, you know, sub three seconds. Um, Phenomenal, really, for what it is. The, the little bits of mods, you know, very little mods required to get to the, the car to you know, this level. This is, you know, almost 200 horsepower more than a factory Golf R. So, you know, for the money, the bang for buck is incredible. Yeah, normally what we would normally do is um, go out and uh, race these uh, vehicles. Well, I say race. Uh, we get these cars and I show Tabby how to drive. Um, but that's what normally happens. Uh, we'll do like a little 0 to 60, uh, you know, on them Mexico roads. Um, we'll do a private roads which are just out the front here. Um, and uh, yeah, what, what would you say the difference is between the stage one and the stage three and off the line, Tabby, in, in relation to the uh, I mean, turbo use, lag? Or using large control, control, you're probably not going to experience much lag from a, a lower RPM as you would if you were just sort of going. Interrupting the video here. He's completely through me now, my guy. That's it. He's through bars. That's it. Through bars. So yeah, you were just mentioning about the, obviously the getting off the line on these cars. Yeah, so using large control on these particular cars, they can generate boost. Um, so the lag. You know, isn't so much there in those circumstances. If you both sort of just went off on the accelerator without launch control, you're probably going to experience a little bit of lag. While you know, bigger turbo, it takes a little bit longer to spool. Um, the turbo that they use isn't, you know, isn't a huge turbo, so there isn't a crazy amount of lag. So you're probably talking about four, five hundred RPM longer than a stock turbo would spool. So. In those circumstances, you know, with stage one on the stock table might pip it a little bit if launch control wasn't getting used, but you know, that's what launch control is for. I think one of the, uh, the, the overlooked points that we haven't mentioned is uh, people ask what's the longevity uh, going to stage one, stage two, and stage three. Well, it's a simple scenario, and this is one that, that, was, that was told to me some years ago. So uh, imagine a bucket of water. 
um, full of water. Uh, there is a life expectancy of any engine, whether that's 200,000 miles, 300,000 miles. Once you go to stage one, you may as well drill a small hole in the bucket of water, and that's the life expectancy of the engine running. Um, it will already have, obviously have a small hole in the bucket originally, um, if you imagine that life running away. Stage one, you drill another hole. Stage two, you drill another hole. Stage three, drill another two holes. And then if you build the engine and strengthen the engine, you can plug one of them holes back up. But if you're looking for a way of creating and helping that longevity is your engine oil. Now that is one of the most important uh, things for us is not using the manufacturer's oil once we go up to especially stage two level, stage three level, but is actually upgrading the oil. And we use Tabby for these, uh, I mean we stock Miller's Nano Drive, um, anything that's sort of, 300B. yeah, some, some of it's ester based, the ester based oil seems to be or oh, seem to perform better. And the nano drives a triple ester, triple based. ester based in the nano drive. Uh, same with the model film with V. Uh, it's really good oil, just very expensive. Uh, but you know, you want to not only that, you know, you want to continue to do your oil changes more regularly. If you were sort of you know stage one, you do it more regularly than what the manufacturers recommend. If you were stage two, you try and do it a bit more, and then stage three again, you know, we're changing. Tabby, you remind me of a robot. Stage three, we'll uh, you know we'll change the oil. I mean, it's our cars, and we'll do it all the time. You know, we take it out; it's coming out like gold. It's not not not, 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 not the type, we got. type of gold. Um, you know, clear, uh, nice, clean oil. Um, and when we, if we do a track day, it's fresh oil before the track day, fresh oil after, after the track day, uh, and then all the fluids are changed at that point. We like to maintain hours, but stage three, you know, for me, three to four thousand miles, you want to be changing the oil on those just to keep it, keep it working. You know, we're running the run rather hot as well, which again takes away some of the properties out of the oil. Um, so, you know, the more, more you can do with the maintenance side, you know, the, the longer or the more longevity you're going to see, you know, back on that. Did we another important point? going from oil to fuel, you know, putting the right octanes in, you know, higher octanes the better, you know, makes the cars run more efficiently and most calibrations are done around higher octane fuels, so putting in a lower octane fuel will, you know, only in the long term cause damage to the engine. So I just want to mention on the fuel, we obviously talk about supermarket fuels, um, the only fuels that we do recommend is Shell and Tesco 99 Momentum. Um, no other supermarket fuel that we're aware of uh, comes up to that level. No, currently there's none that are you know, 98 and above. Um, there's only Tesco, Shell, I think Costco tried 98 at one point, but you know, they got fouled out pretty quickly that it wasn't good enough. Um, I think they degraded that down now as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, maintenance, keeping the, the car, you know, on the right kind of fuel, you know, help you, you know, in the long run. So, stage one car. Um, this, this, this car um, is what, three, anywhere between 360 and 370 horsepower, yeah. stage one? Yeah, so because of the hardware adapted, the car is, it is a stage one, but it's not bone stock, it's got, you know, uh, this is a cool uh, oil cooler, it's got the catch car, it's got the full racing line. In but it doesn't have a downpipe, it's so not it's downpipe. just this a... Is, that's currently a GPF car, so... GPF car with intercooler, yeah. and this produces between the region of 360 and 371 horsepower. Yeah. Stage 2, if we did a stage 2 on this vehicle, um, so that's changing the downpipe, we've already got the intercooler, uh, and we obviously would change the software on this vehicle. We'd see in the region of between 385 to 400, 400 horsepower. Yeah. Some we've seen over we've the seen 400, even more than 400 horsepower. Depends what, depends what dyno, uh, that lorry number you put on on that one. Um, and this car, we've seen uh, different uh, turbo units 
up to around the 530 horsepower. Obviously, as we said earlier on, this one doesn't achieve that, but it's been built that way um, for a safe, reliable power. Yeah, this this one is totally designed around, you know, you know, being able to run it on a stock motor and you know, being able to do it in, you know, although any, you know, nearly 200 horsepower outside the manufacturer specified, so you know, the stress on the engine is, is the, but you know, the running in probably the most safest way possible to, to give you a product that you can sort of fit and kind of forget um, in a way, but any, you know, going into those kind of realms, I always recommend an engine build of some nature in, in the Stratford rods, bearings, pistons, etc. Right, for us, I think we've done a lot of rambling this yeah. morning. Uh, uh, he definitely has rambled. <laughs> um, so, this just leaves us to say, look, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're at home, staying safe, everybody's healthy. It is uh, a very strange time for us all at the moment. Um, you know, we're not sure if we're going to be back at work uh, officially in a, in a week and a half or whether we're not going to be back for the next couple of months. We just don't know. But I just wanted to say for myself, to you guys, uh, stay safe and um, thanks for watching the channel. And um, make some comments below. Let us know what you want to see next. Um, we are going to be looking at doing something on the road with these two vehicles as a comparison coming up shortly. So that's definitely one to stay tuned in. Thank you, see you later. Bye.